Good afternoon and welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Discipleship Family. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. We ask that you please silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Like Abraham and Sarah, we are called to follow God's word and obey God's law. Our celebrant is Father Delphine. Delphine, please stand.
sisters and brothers, and welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers, today, the second Sunday of Lent, and the Lord is showing to us, as He transfigured Himself, the importance of prayer in our lives. Jesus, together with the three disciples, went to the mountain to pray. And there, the disciples, or the apostles of Jesus, saw Jesus when He was changed. And that is the transfiguration of Jesus. They went to the mountain to pray. So we are here in the church to pray. To offer this Eucharist for all the many blessings that we have received in our lives. But for the times that sometimes we are lazy to pray, we forget to pray because we are so busy, this is the moment for us to check ourselves and ask the Lord for pardon. Us. I confess to my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have done to you, to my God, 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 to my
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design. And the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality and light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud, came a voice that said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. 
when the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, we heard in today's Gospel that Jesus brought his disciples and over the disciples, the three of them, Peter, James, and John. They went to a high mountain and let them experience his transfiguration. You know, during those times, the disciples were tired already doing the different missions. And then Jesus asked them, come, come on, only the three of them. They were tired and needed assurance from the Master. And the Master is our Lord. The religious experience at the mountain top recharged them and made them more clear of and confident in their identity and mission. You know the word transfiguration means a change of form, a change of appearance, transfiguration. So transfiguration even depicts a glimpse of Christ's glory and this transfiguration is a preview of his resurrection. And that is the reason why they went up to the mountain to pray. And that is the purpose of going there, to pray. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, prayer is the time to connect the gap between him and us and to align our thinking with God. Why? It is because, you know, there are times that we try to adjust God's thinking to ours. As when Peter tried to change Jesus' mind about suffering and death. You remember when the, disciples, when the apostles together with Jesus and Jesus was telling them, Oh, I will suffer and I will die. And what did the reply of Peter? Oh no, Lord, you cannot do that. So, you, the obstacles, Satan, get behind me. You remember that story in the gospel? And that is the reason why. Sometimes, in our prayer, we want God's thinking to adjust God's thinking to ours. But remember, my dear sisters and brothers, this is an invitation for us to listen to Jesus. Jesus, the transfigured one, listen to him in prayer. And as you listen, follow him faithfully, religiously, as transfigured people of God. When we listen to God, when we follow Him, we become transfigured people. And how, how do we do this? Also, in the season of Lent, we are asked to spend more time in prayer. And this is the reason why you will be hearing always about the three pillars of Lenten season. Prayer, fasting, giving, And this is the prayer that the Lord is telling us to have more time in prayer. Because praying is not trying to get God on our side, but making sure we are on God's side. 
If we are on God's side, it brings us closer to Him who lives in our hearts. So my dear sisters and brothers, prayer transforms and changes us. Jesus' face changed when He prayed. You remember? When they prayed, when they are on the mountain to pray, what happened? He was transfigured before them, before these apostles. And according to the gospel, His face shone like the sun, and His clothes became white as light. The effect of prayer. Prayer gives us strength to go on with our life. And so may we feel that we are not alone because God is with us. And so during this season of Lent, let us be quiet. This is the invitation to be quiet, to be like on that mountain, to be quiet in prayer and not rumble on. So we can really listen to Jesus. So let us spend time reading the Gospels in the season of Lent, in a, in a religious uh, materials, reflecting on how Jesus lived his life. And always recognize the presence of God among us as a people of faith, and especially in this Holy Eucharist. You know, in a few moments, as we receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, Jesus will be among us. He will be among us in a special way to teach, to lead, and to make us one with Him. As Jesus said, from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to me. So my dear sisters and brothers, we thank Jesus for being always with us, be it on mountains high or in valleys deep, as we journey through life, especially in this Lenten season. So you know, during those weeks, I ask you, to continue to pray for our church, especially as we do this BMA campaign, the Bishop's Ministry Appeal. Appeal. So this BMA campaign, I always ask you to pray, to pray for this. And I know you are praying for the good result of this BMA campaign. And I would like to thank you once again for all your help and support in our BMA campaign. Just continue to pray and pray. And to understand more better how the diocese helps us to the BMA, may I call our former administrator of St. Bernadette, our youth coordinator, and now working at St. Mary's School, Gay Casillas. You know, because of your generous heart, our parish received help and support. Again, and let us listen to Gay. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Father, for the intro. Again, my name is Gabriel Casillas, and first and foremost, I would like to take this moment to personally thank everyone who supported our youth ministry's recent trip to LA Youth Day. Because of your support, 13 young Catholics were able to experience a truly faith-changing event that has helped further our number one mission as Catholics, and that is to make disciples and help bring others closer to Christ. As Father had mentioned, I am the former administrator here at our parish, but have continued to serve as a youth minister as long, alongside my wife, Valerie. In the new path God has laid before me, I am now the director of ministry at St. Mary's High School. And the other day, in one of my classes, one of my students, who actually attends our parish, asked me, why has the church been spending so much time during Mass asking for money lately? And although the question may have seemed slightly off topic, I was very glad that she asked it. Because in reality, it was a great question in regards to what we were discussing that day in class, which was, 
discipleship in the church. Some of you right now may also be in the same boat as my student, asking yourself, why am I here again listening to somebody talk to me about giving more money to the church? Well, the answer I gave to my class is the same answer I give you now, and that is discipleship. You have heard over the last few weeks how important the bishop's ministry appeal is and how it supports our diocese and our parish. But today, I am here to tell you how your donation to the VMA supports our number one mission as Catholics, and that is making disciples of Jesus Christ. Specifically, how the VMA supports the church's efforts to bring our youth closer to Him. When you donate to the VMA, you are supporting the future of the church and the future disciples our church needs now more than ever. For the past five years, donations to the VMA have directly funded our youth ministry here at St. Bernadette's. And over the years, those donations have helped our youth find a place where they can freely express their pains and their struggles and learn how to heal by giving it all to God. A place where young women hear the truth of what it means to be a daughter of God and young men are taught what, is, what it means to be strong men of faith and men of virtue. Those same donations have helped take our youth to new horizons, showing them a world outside of our city walls, giving them a glimpse of the beautiful, diverse world God has created. They have helped create a place that is Christ-focused, a ministry that focuses on helping build our youth closer to Jesus through prayer, trust, and works of mercy. Your donations have helped create a home where our youth can be themselves, where they can be open and honest about their challenges and their victories, all while building a closer relationship to Christ. Your sacrifice that you have given to the VMA over the years have helped save young lives and young souls and have helped create disciples of Jesus Christ. Every single one of us is called to fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave his apostles 2,000 years ago to go forth and make disciples of the world. So when you donate to the VMA, you are doing exactly this. You are helping to bring our youth closer to Christ and to make new disciples of the faith. So if you have not done so yet, please consider a donation to the VMA today. In every pew, you'll find an, el you'll find an envelope. And again, we ask that every family, if able, make a pledge of $54 a month over the next eight months. But whatever you are able to donate, no matter the amount, know that it will help build the future of our church and help create disciples in which our church needs now more than ever. Thank you all, and God bless. Thank you so much, Gary, for that uh, beautiful, uh, you know, um, reflection about how the diocese help our young people here in our church, the St. Bernadette. Thank you for sharing that uh, beautiful experience. And uh, again, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, my dear people of God, and uh, your continued support you know, here in our church is very much appreciated. Thank you. Please rise. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of God.
Eu preciso de um quadro de cima. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, as we pray and offer these intentions, Holy God, you have set us apart so that we learn to see as you see and respond to the needs of those around us. Today, we lift up the prayers of our community. For those who are given roles of leadership in our local government and those who are in need of wisdom and energy to do their work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear all our prayers. For those who serve as teachers and preachers in our faith communities and those who are eager to hear God's words, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear all our prayers. For those who are weary of life's routines and those who need a glimpse of the glory that is to come, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear all our prayers. For those who feel unworthy of God's love and attention and those who have the ability to share God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the dearly departed, especially for Maximo and Alice Colon, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in the peace of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Holy God, renewing us the desire to see your face and know you in the fullness of your glory. Stay with us as we continue our lengthy journey. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord is the sacrifice of Jesus. And the praise of your name. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, let us of our hearts and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Pastor of the Spirits through Christ our Lord. The Lord bear with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, our Father, Almighty and Eternal God, after he had told the disciples of his death on the whole mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so in the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end, we acclaim you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chance and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chance of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Maximum and Alice Colony. 
welcome them into the life of our faiths. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Bernadette, Saint Magdalene of Canossa, and Saint Josephine Bucky, and all the saints who have wished you throughout the ages. We may learn to be your eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the love of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who come to the supper of the Lord. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us by the still on earth to be partakers even now of the days of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel. Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Bernadette, Pray for us. please be seated for silence. Join us for Stations of the Cross every Friday of Lent at 5.30 p.m., followed by a soup dinner. The Knights of Columbus will have their monthly breakfast next Sunday, March 12th, after the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Masses. We hope you can join us. Also, St. Patrick's Bingo will be on March 11th after the Vigil Mass, and tickets are on sale after Mass. We will have our Lenten Penance service on Thursday, March 16th at 7 p.m., Come and receive God's grace. St. Bernadette will be offering a massive healing for all those who need God's merciful touch in their lives. Mark the date for March 25th at 10 a.m. Springing forward, daylight saving time begins, so please move your clocks one hour ahead on Saturday evening, March 11th, and do not be late for mass. <laughs> we need to be reminded. Or maybe the priest is the one who's there. <laughs> anyway, so once again, with your sisters and brothers, I would like to thank you for all you know your support, especially in this uh, our BMA campaign. I hope and pray that uh, we continue to pray for this uh, big fundraising, as we say, to, to help our diocese and also to help to help our church. And as we heard in this uh, in the announcement, and I would like to follow it up. You know, as we prepare for this Lenten celebration, as we prepare for the coming of our Lord, uh, for, the, for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So, we have a lot of activities or events that are happening here in our church. To know more about our activities, so check the website, we have the bulletin, also we have the big poster. As you see, all the different activities for Lenten season, and for Easter season. And so, we have done our Lenten reflection. So last March 1st, thank you for those who came and listen to Father Larry Machado. 
So in our preparation for the uh, resurrection, now every Friday is the season of Lent, you are all invited to please come and join us in this, uh, you know, the station of the cross. And after the station of the cross, we have a soup after. And, you know, the sharing and the knowing, getting to know more each other, you know, telling stories or what you can say. And then, um, this coming February, uh, this coming March 16, I invite you, invite your families, invite your friends for our Lenten penance. So we will have maybe eight, nine or ten priests from the from our dinner to come and to do this penance service. This is the time for you to you know to really prepare ourselves. And especially now, we will have the healing mass on March 25th. I encourage you, if you know your friends or members of your family, your neighbor, and they are sick, and they can still go to the church, invite them to receive the anointing of the sick. Okay, so anyone who are sick here, any, you know, you can just receive that anointing. And we will have this beautiful, uh, you know, uh, celebration of the anointing. So that will be on March 25. That is the Annunciation of our Lord, of Annunciation, the Feast of the Annunciation. Okay, thank you once again, and please rise for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow your hands and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glorious beauty showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mass has been offered. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday to all of you.